Welcome back, everyone. We have Dave Officer with us, our spotlight artist. And we're going to kick it off with just le learning a little bit about Dave and what he does and how he got to where he is now. Dave, you want to start us off? Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good morning. Good whatever it is, wherever you are. Uh, yeah. Where do you want me to start? Uh, first of all, why don't you tell um, everyone who doesn't know you uh, what you do as far as being an artist? Mm. So I am a graphic designer and illustrator, um, predominantly for um, businesses to do things with um, their websites, their you know brochures, branding, logos, all, all that kind of stuff. And then I kind of divide my time um between doing that and doing stuff just for a laugh just for my own amusement and my own creative juices uh, and that's creating a load of content creating stuff for youtube i've started getting into creating nfts and loads of other little stupid daft things on the side to keep things interesting awesome awesome so another question that i had for you was um, what 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 is your strategy when you're pitching yourself um, to a business to try to to get them to to employ you as an artist with them and to to work with them? What is what is your strategy as far as marketing yourself? Um, the the best thing that I've found is um, not concerning myself with strategy because it's not a, a strong suit of mine i prefer just well the the, be the best thing that ever happened to me was just kind of not concerning myself too much with uh what i was putting out there and not worrying too much about um doing things that were potentially a little bit uh odd sometimes a little bit riskier and but mainly yeah. if something here's the bar i set for myself right and i i've got it here but it's it's low so uh if something amuses me i'll do it and that's pretty much it and along the lines it amuses other people who in turn then want to work with me which is cool um i'm a big advocate of you know that sort of advice that's always peddled around which is you know just be yourself yeah. um but that sentence in of itself is quite vague you know it's you know, what does that actually mean when you apply it to business and your own art or whatever the hell it is you're trying to you know get out there um it doesn't really explain an awful lot but there's um for me it's not taking myself very seriously that's my specialty not really taking myself <laughs> seriously at all um and that i like to think that comes through in some of the stuff i put out and some of the work that comes through but it kind of it resonates with people who because especially if um so taking linkedin as an example if uh, my post stops someone scrolling on their feed, they're pretty confident that I can then do the same for them. So if they're in a crowded marketplace or whatever it is, and they need to stand out in some sort of way, they know that I've done that for myself. So it gives them the confidence that I can do the same for them. So it's the same sort of thing. Like um, another example of just being yourself, there's a, there's, um, there's a guy I know that runs a marketing agency and he, and they are, one of their strongest values is their um, their stance on sustainability and just protecting the planet and just doing all that kind of stuff. And everything that they put out there, all of their marketing materials, all of their content online, the only thing they ever talk about is sustainability. And they'll you know talk about news stories about it, other companies that are doing cool things, cool things that they are doing. They never once talk about their services. Uh, but they don't need to because they're attracting a tribe of other people who believe what they believe. And when they do need what they do, they can check it out. They, they, they know where to find their list of services and what they do. But they're, all, they're attracting the right sort of people because they're talking about something they are passionate about. And it's attracting the right sort of people. So it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of being yourself and not and you will attract those type of people. Um, and I get loads of jobs that come my way that are things I, I couldn't possibly advertise, you know, because people, when people see your work, first of all, they like you as an individual and then they like your work. They will think of ways they can use you. Um, mm -hmm. a, a guy said something really interesting to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was talking him through what I did and I was walking him through some examples of my work. And he said, 
he started looking around the room um because we were on a video call he goes i i don't need you right now but i'm i'm actually looking for things i can get you to do because i want to work with you so it's interesting that people when people see what you do and it resonates with them and they like it they will find a reason a lot of the time to get you involved in whatever their project is um and they'll think of different ways because i've i've just been commissioned to do a piece on an office wall mm -hmm. which and and the piece itself is just going to combine loads of different things that the owners of the company love and you know it doesn't it it's not going to help their company it's not going to help their marketing it's just it's for them so they have something on the wall that they love to do and that's mm -hmm. a good example of people who have just seen what i've see what I've done. They don't necessarily need the bread and butter stuff that I do, you know, the logos and the branding and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but that didn't matter to them. They were like, no, I, I want to get something from this guy. So in terms of how I pitch myself to people, I'm pretty lucky that I don't need to do it too often um, because people have already seen enough of my stuff when they have a need for it or they decide they want to work with me and something. So they're already... They're already kind of sold without signing. So like building a, a community is basically what you're saying. Building a community and um, being being true to yourself in a way, and as as well as being present in social media. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's that's been a, that's been a huge been that's been a huge thing for me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. been massive. Yeah. And then as far as LinkedIn, because you had mentioned that, and that was actually going to be my next question is um yeah you know do you like straight market yourself there or you just like to show off your work a lot like what exactly do you do as far as your social media and how you post and things like that in order to get those things i tried all of the standard stuff first which i think everybody kind of does which is um sharing examples of your work <laughs> um now, for me, and especially at that point, um, it was just the occasional job that I'd done for clients. And especially when I was just starting out, none of, none of that work was that interesting. Because, um, you know, when, whenever you start out in this game and you just take whatever the hell you can do, those jobs tend to be lower paid. They tend to, uh, you're working with the wrong sort of people they will change what you've done so you end up you know whatever the actual final product is it's rarely something you're proud of um and it's rarely something you really want to show off but you kind of have this little bank of things that are a bit crap but you're like okay i mm -hmm. need to show some of the stuff that i've done so i'll just put it out but it, the problem with that and especially doing what i do when it comes to the logo and branding side of things or even just illustrations for the businesses no matter how good they might be um, if there's no sort of story behind them or no connection with what you're showing, people, they're rarely interested. Yeah. And so you just kind of plop this thing up and it might look cool and a couple of people might see it and go, yeah, it looks all right, yeah. But generally people don't really care. That that piece of work only really matters to you and the person you've made it for because um, you're not telling people the kind of story behind it. So when I kind of yeah. started posting stuff, I was sharing some work. I was sharing articles that i'd find around uh, around on online and that was kind of a lazy thing you know just oh i've seen this this is cool you might like to read this as well but no one scrolling through their feed wants to go and start reading a blog they're you know they're on social media because they want to be on social media yeah. so um so that stuff didn't really work it was only when i started um creating stuff predominantly for um social so it was you know i've, I've started thinking of some parody ads um, I would mm -hmm. take companies that already exist and put them, create an ad that they would never conceivably go for. But I just thought it was slightly amusing. So I put that together um, and I, it, it, those things really started to work for me. So I just started creating things off the back of stupid ideas that I had. And <laughs> so it, it helped to show the creative thinking behind them. It helped to show the execution behind them. And hopefully at the same time, give people a bit of a giggle. So, uh, yeah, so that was kind of the, the turning point for me when I just kind of, I had all these ideas, you know, written down and never really did anything with them. But when I started to apply them and, and separate enough time out of my week to actually put these things together and just throw them out, some of them died a death, but some of them did pretty well. Um, 
and then I would start getting work off the back of that because people would see it and go, ooh, that, that was amusing. Or I, I, did, I never would have thought of that kind of thing. Um, I like the way your mind works, Sonny Jim. Uh, let's have a chat. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how it worked. No, that's that's awesome. You know, and I'm looking at the chat and it looks like a lot of people are uh, loving this. Oh, yeah. I need to put my old man glasses on. <laughs> read, read some of this stuff. No, know. that's great. That's great. So um, I just had uh, one more question for you, me, myself, and then we'll get to um, the Q&A there. Uh, what advice would you give, like if you were going to give one piece of advice to an artist that is trying to uh, market themselves for businesses as far as like something similar to what you're doing, what one piece of advice would you give them? Um, it's, it's the same piece of advice that I got from a guy. Before I tell you, I'll picture, I'd picture the scene, right? So I'm in... Um, <laughs> I'm in a hotel bar, right? Uh, this isn't going where you think it is. I can see some filthy minds. Uh, <laughs> so I'm in a hotel bar with a friend of mine and um, one of his friends comes in who's going to help us try and market our band, right? So the band that we're in, which we, we just play like, you know, functions and bars and we're just like a cover band, but we do it for, we do it for uh, just chits and giggles really. Mm -hmm. um, so his friend comes in and he's a marketing expert, right? And he's worked for some big companies. And I'm like, okay, this guy's gonna, this guy's gonna know his stuff. Um, and he walks in the room, and he's got this massive leather jacket on, these chains coming from his jeans, big old beard, tattoos. Walks in the room. He's got the most confident walk I've ever seen a human being have. He kind of binds in, and there wasn't light behind him, but in my mind, there was all this light flashing behind him and Judas Priest were playing. That's just in my own head. But he comes walking through, plonks himself on the seat. Um, and I'm like, I, I love you. Um, but he started talking about how he walks into these, these large corporations where everyone is suited and booted and they're taking themselves seriously. And he, um, he goes in there with his full heavy metal garb on he swears like a trooper um but all of these guys love him because he is it, well firstly he knows his stuff so that helps um but he doesn't uh he doesn't beat around the bush there's he is straight laced like what you see is what you get he doesn't change his appearance he doesn't change his tone of voice for anybody no matter what level they are no matter how big the project might be no matter how many millions of pounds might be spent on whatever project he's working on doesn't care and his main thing for us was you need to be completely and unashamedly yourself and once you flick that switch uh that's when things change for you so no matter what that thing is if something you're passionate about something you can speak with great authority or just great drive about and whatever that thing is about you don't hide that ever for any single human being because those people are dickheads that you don't want in your life in the first place <laughs> so um yeah yeah be completely unashamedly yourself in whatever way that makes sense for you um because a lot of advice out there is kind of it's like top level you know vague can sort of apply to everybody but doesn't really yeah. Um, so a lot of it is just drivel that you sh probably shouldn't waste your time spending. You probably shouldn't waste your time listening to me in fairness, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, but that, that's what I would say to everybody else. Like for me, when I stopped playing it safe mm -hmm. and started, uh, just doing whatever came into my head really, cause there wasn't strategy behind it. There was just, ha, that's funny. Okay. Let's try that. Um, cause that's the way I operate. I don't overthink things ever. Um, you know, just it, there's a thought, go run with it or any of that kind of stuff. Um, so when I started applying that to my marketing is when it started to work for me. So that would be my advice. That is that's... amazing advice. And wow, the storytelling skills are just <laughs> amazing. So we do have one question from the audience and then we're going to get back to networking. Uh, so it's they asked if someone is trying to monetize their artistic talents, what is the best place to start? 
in your opinion? Oh, ah, uh, ah, uh ha. -huh. So it's in the Q&A tab. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's all right. You read it anyway. What am I, I trying did, to do? I sure did. <laughs> why, am I, why am I? I could just throw these away. Um, so sorry. So if someone is just starting to monetize. Yeah, yeah. If someone's trying to monetize their talents, uh, what is the best place to start in your opinion? Um, I'll tell you where I started. I don't know if it'd be the best. Um, so I started going to physical networking groups. Mm -hmm. um, they're a slow burner, but if you can find the, you know, if you can find it, you have to, I had to go to a hell of a lot of them before I, you know, knew which ones to avoid, you know, yeah. like league and never go back to again. Um, <laughs> but I, I find a few that were pretty good, but they're, lo they're long burners. I suppose if it's, if, if you're talking about um, applying what you do directly to something a business can use, then uh, you need to get some jobs under your belt, first of all. And the way people typically tend to do that, um, and the way I started to do it, I still had a full-time job and I was doing this on the side. Mm -hmm. um, so it didn't matter too much at that point what money I was making from it because I still had the full-time job. So I was yeah. going on the loads of job boards. I mean, there are tons of them. Um, because there are tons of them, there are tons of uh, idiots on there who will price themselves out for very little money but so y you never make a lot of money on those sites but they're a good way to start they're a good way to figure out how to work with people they're a good way to get a system done as to right you know how am I gonna what's my process going to be for each job that I get through so for example on a logo project now I have a really really stringent system that I use and I learned that through years and years of dealing with horrible individuals that I would never want to work with again, but um, it taught me how to, you know, drill down the process. So it is just yeah. super slick now. Um, so I start, I, I would start with like not concerning yourself too much with the money that you're going to make from it. You just kind of need to get out there and just start doing some jobs just to work out the process. Also work out what you enjoy, because another thing when I started, um, I was offering loads more things than I offer now, because I could I could create websites. So I was mm -hmm. kind of offering that as well, but I absolutely, yeah. but I found out after I did a few for people that I hated it, so now I don't yeah. it at all. So you kind of, a lot of things that you enjoy doing, you might find as soon as there's an exchange of money for that thing, that you fall out of love with it. And that might be the point where you go, actually, I'm not going to offer this as a service because I don't want to fall out of love with this. I'm going to offer this instead. This might be a better fit. Or the way that I do it is I kind of split my time now between client work and uh, just doing stuff for my own, whether it's marketing or for my own just um, entertainment to keep it mm -hmm. fresh. Because doing client work day in, day out, five, six, seven days a week will grind you down. No matter how you know, not all of us are getting like these amazing projects day in, day out, day in, day out. That just doesn't happen. I don't think that there's maybe a handful of individuals on earth that work like that. But for the most of us, um, you don't get these amazing projects all the time. So you do need to keep yeah. time aside to do things like passion projects and just stuff you really, really want to do. So when you split your time up between doing those things that are for you, no one can tell you how to do them. No one can tell you that's wrong. Fix that. It's just you. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's important to keep those kind of things going. Um, so yeah, that would be it. I'd, I'd say just, just get out there and, and, and figure out how you can apply what it is you're doing to the market see what other people are doing and there's always a stage where you, you kind of try and replicate what other people are doing and that's fine because you need to do that to figure out you know what you do best um because i was you know kind of replicating loads of old lo other logo work that i was seeing when i just started doing it mm -hmm. uh, now that's the last thing i, I would do but it's kind of it's it's good to teach you methods and figure out your own way and then you'll figure out what it is that you bring to the table and then you can start approaching jobs with much more confidence because you know what it is that you bring and you can speak more confidently about what it is you will bring and with that comes 
the the confidence to charge more for it as well mm-hmm. and that just kind of then just begins to snowball i hope i've answered that you did yeah okay. you did no the the chat was on fire and thank you so much for um just letting everybody pick your brain a little bit and coming up here Ain't in songs.